Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And as you're here, I guess you've got an N62 engine that's smoking. And we all know the advice for that. Take it to a garage, get the valve guide seals replaced and give them 2,000 to 3,000 pounds for the job because it's quite a difficult job to do. Um, and then you start thinking, well, is the car worth it? I mean, is the value worth spending £3,000, $4,000 or whatever? I'm getting it fixed. But before you do that, for goodness sake, change the PCV valves. Now, what the system is all about is inside the crankcase, pressure is produced by uh, the combustion process pushing past the piston rings you get a very small amount goes past the piston rings and if you just blocked off the crankcase um, then that will produce pressure and that can blow out seals and all sorts of horrible things. So since the day of the first combustion engines they used to have a vent that vented the crankcase gases out into the atmosphere. Now modern engines can't do that because the crankcase gases are hydrocarbons and they're pollutants. Um, so the first thing that was done was to route the crankcase fas uh, gases back into the inlet manifold. And that, of course, recycled the crankcase gases, which also contained useful hydrocarbons in unburnt fuel. And the combustion process reburnt them. And so you didn't end up with a lot of polluting gases. Now, that was great until you're whizzing along at 5,000 RPM and let your foot off the throttle, in which case the manifold vacuum was very high, a very high vacuum. And that used to drag all sorts of things out of the crankcase, including oil, and in very bad cases, used to pull seals. So that wasn't a great idea. So since BMW produced the V8 in the M60, uh, they've used a PCV valve. And what a PCV valve is, it's a pressure control valve. It does exactly what it says, a diaphragm with a spring on it, and it controls the pressure within the crankcase. And the pressure is actually a vacuum, a, ma a vacuum of anywhere between sort of 10 and 40 millibars in the negative. Um, and this ensures that the gases are pulled from the crankcase rather than letting them so sit there. And what they also introduced was an OSV, an oil separator valve. And the plan with this is, of course, the crankcase gases contain a number of things. One of them's the oil, which is churned around with inside the engine. Um, so the oil separator valve is a cyclone device and it spins the crankcase gases and the clear gases go to the inlet manifold via the PCV but the heavier oil components return back to the crankcase. And on an M62, we had an OSV and a PCV, and the PCV was in the back of the manifold. The OSV was hidden inside the engine. Very difficult to get to. And they can fail, but only when uh, you try to repair something. And what always happens is when the manifold was uh, taken off, pressure was put on the oil separator valve on the neck of it and it would break. And so changing inlet manifold gases or the PCV, which involved removing the inlet manifold, damaged the oil separator valve and then you're in big trouble. Now on the N62, things are slightly different. We have two PCV valves to start with, one on each bank. And the oil separator valves are actually built into the valve covers. And they're actually part of the moulding of the valve cover. Quite a complicated structure. But its plan is to remove the oil from the clear gases the same way that an oil separator valve did on the M62 engine. Um, as I say, two pressure control valves which control the uh, crankcase pressure vacuum. And as we've got two of them and they're sort of 10, 15, 20 millibars each, we end up with about 40 millibars of vacuum within the crankcase. Now, it's pretty obvious things can go wrong. One of them is the valve covers um, can become caked up with all sorts of muck, sort of uh, oil sludge, 
and so on. And then the oil separator doesn't work and you end up with oil coming through past the pressure control valves and into the manifold. And this is what causes the smoking that you see on cars with the N62. So the 645, 650, 745, 750, all of them with the N62 engine. So they all have the same problem. Now on my car, when I first got it, it was smoking a bit. Um, and because I'm used to M62 engines, I wasn't in the slightest bit worried. I knew I'd have to change the pressure, pressure control valves. And that's what I did. And I found that bank one uh, had all sorts of sludge on the PCV valve. And bank two had a split in the diaphragm. And both sides were affected. So it's no wonder I was getting smoking. So I replaced the PCV valves. There we go. No smoking at all. Um, I had a look at it about a couple of years later. Bank two was fine. Bank one was still covered with a bit of sludge. So I thought I'd have a stab at cleaning out the valve covers. And I did that with some old 5 amp flex, poking it down there, giving it a few goes. And I thought, well, that might work, might not. A couple of years later, today, in fact, removing the PCV valves. And both of them are lovely. No splits, no sludge. So cleaning them out really worked. And what we'll go through today is how to change the PCV valves, how to clear out the sludge. And it's very easy. It takes about half an hour. So I've seen so many on uh, posts on forums saying, I've got smoke coming out of the exhaust. And the advice is, well, I'm sorry. Your valve guide seals are gone. You're going to have to replace them. It's going to be 2,000, 3,000, 400, whatever. And for goodness sake, change the pressure control valves first and clean out the system because it costs you, what, 30, 40 pounds. It takes you half an hour. It's not hard. You can stab yourself a few times in the fingers doing it like I always do. But it's damn easy. You get it done. You seal it back up again. 100 miles later, you've got no more smoke. And that's worth mentioning, of course, if you clean out the PCV valves, the manifold has still got oil in it. And it takes a good 100 miles to clear it out. OK, so that's all the blurb I'm going to tell you about in the history of PCV valves, which have been a problem ever since the M60 engine was introduced. And now is a problem on the N62, but a darn sight easier to fix. OK, let's get on with it. Right, let's have a look at where the system is on an N62 engine. This is the PCV valve assembly. One of them's in a foam cover. And there, there's an SBT for that that explains why it's in a foam cover. And the other one's stuck onto the uh, valve cover, as you'd expect. There we go. There's one on the right, one on the left. Um, right, let's get the engine cover off. Uh, four lots of 10 mil conical nuts. Easy enough. It's, as I say, it's all very easy on the N62 compared to the M62, which was a lot of hard work. So let's whip off those nuts. And uh, when we get to the engine, say on the N60, on the 650, it's easy. Um, haven't tried it on a 645, but the engine cover comes off easily enough. And I'm sure some models still have both PCV valves actually stuck on the valve covers. But on mine, there's one in this rubbery thing. And that was done to insulate it from extremes of weather. And extremes of weather, both of them could freeze up and then the crankcase would explode. So they put one in a foam cover to stop it freezing, stop water um, condensating in it, and it would drain back to the valve cover. So first thing to do is just remove the rubbery cover off, the, the foam cover off that PCV valve, and there's a close-up look at it. The PCV valve diaphragm spring is contained in there, and this shows me doing it before using a couple of small screwdrivers to lift up the tabs. Um, but... It's a bit more fiddly, that, and I usually stab myself in the finger as, uh, at least a couple of times. There must be an easier way to get that cover off, but I haven't found it. You put pressure in the upwards direction as you remove each of the tabs. Um, I'm trying a different method there. That's not going to work. Um, there we go. Cover off, and there's the orange valve itself, and below it is the spring. There we go. There's the spring. Really glad to see that it's got no gunk in it like it did last time. And then you have a damn good look at the diaphragm. You sort of spread it out, twiddle it around, make sure there's got no splits in it, not full of gunk or anything. 
turn it inside out, check the other bit, and that's fine. That's a perfect PCV valve diaphragm. Absolutely no problem with that at all. So I'm quite happy to stick him back in again. What I do first is I'll remove the spring again and give it a quick clean out, but there's not much oil in there at all. Really pleased with that. After cleaning out the gunk a couple of years ago, that it hasn't come back. Of course, I've had no smoke or anything or would have done it earlier. OK, so that's the rubbery, uh, the diaphragm back on. Then we've got to fit the cover and we just remember that it's got the pointy thing that points slightly backwards and that clips onto the foam rubber bit. And you do each clip in turn and you hear the, each one of them click. It's important you do that because if you don't, it will leak. And then you'll get unmetered air into the manifold. You hear each of them clicking as I press them round. So I'm quite happy with that. That's all closed up. Give it a quick clean, put the cover back on. There we go, that's lovely. That's quite happy. And we can then move on to the other one. There's the one which I had when I first got the 650. Big split in it. Obviously not working correctly, not getting the correct uh, crankcase pressure. And that was it, sort of burnt and split in half. And that's the other one on bank one, full of gunk. And as I said, I've changed them three times now. Um, first two times, gunk in it. And that's the complete assembly. You can actually pull it off of the engine. There's just three clips that hold it on. One to, back, to the banks, one the other bank, one to the manifold. And you're meant to squash the serrated bit and they pop off. But as the plastic gets older, it gets stiffer and you have to use a screwdriver to get it off. And all I did with that assembly is I stuck it in the sink, lots of washing up liquid, lots of boiling hot water, and just washed all the gunk out, clicked it all back together and fitted it back to the engine. And as I say, oh, I cleaned out the uh, the valve cover as well for a length of five amp flex. I cleaned it up fine. And I was really pleased this time to open it up and find no gunk at all. Right, second bank. Trick is get your hand right behind the B of the BMW and that pops out a single fixing which goes into a rubber grommet. And just slide it downwards. Don't try and pull it out because all sorts of bits and bobs get in the way. Right, close up. There we go. There's the PCV valve on bank two. And you see the little clips and I'll stick the screwdriver in there so you get the idea of how I'm going to Pull them out, here we go, oh, yeah, yeah, looks easy until you stab yourself in the fingers a few times. Right, speed up and get on with it, here we go, poke, yeah, well, that's, that probably hurt, yeah. Off we go, yeah, and it doesn't take long until the whole thing pops out, and there we go, that's the second one. Good look around that one as well, and make sure it's got no burns, no cracks, no gunge, that one looks fine. A bit harder to look at it with one hand holding the camera, but there you go. But that one's fine as well, so I'm very pleased with that all round. Both of them fine. No need to replace them and stick them back in again. There we go, just make sure he's seated correctly all round the outside before we put the cover on. And it's the same plan with the other cover. Slightly easier because you're pushing against the head rather than a sort of wobbly bit of pipe work. That again, make sh absolutely sure you get all of the clips in. Uh, go around all of them here in each one, go click. And that makes sure that the diaphragm is fully sealed. Actually, you don't want it to leak at all. Right, a uh, quick clean up. And a quick tip on getting those the side engine covers on is to use a bit of grease in the grommet and uh, makes it a lot easier to get it back off again the next time. So just a bit of sort of general purpose grease. And then when you push it back on, press right in the middle of the B. There we go. Yeah, I'm pointing out. There it goes. Click. Back on again. That's lovely. Right. Let's um, measure the crankcase vacuum with a manometer. Or you can do it with a length of hose, with a length of, length of tube with some oil in it, um, as shown on my website. But I'm going to use a manometer, which is a very accurate vacuum gauge. I've actually plugged the uh, dipstick side into the negative thing so we'll read a positive value on the manometer but we're looking between 30 and 40 millibars so there we go and that's fine ticking over 37.5 slowly going up that's normal and rev it up a bit as well 
just to make sure that it behaves itself when it's revved up and also obviously as it coasts back down again is when they go wrong and that's fine that's sitting about 40 absolutely perfect time to put the engine covers on right engine cover on it's a bit fiddly sometimes uh, to line up the studs with the holes through the cover but you sort of wiggle it around until it makes it no need to do anything else there we go that's on and then it's just a case of tightening up the four conical nuts well i hope you've enjoyed this video the smoking problem is a bit of one that's a bugbear on the n62 but the pcv valves are responsible for probably about 50 or 60 percent of the causes so absolutely make sure that you change the pcv valves first before you do anything else like paying out three or four grand to get it fixed well thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time